7.4 horizontal parabolas with vertex at 0, 0 is our lesson for today. So up to now, what we've studied is what's called a vertical parabola. So that would be uh, when your end behavior is going to positive infinity along the y-axis. So the vertical parabolas, this is what we already know. So what we're going to be doing is switching things around. And so when we switch it around, that's called a horizontal or sideways parabola. And that's when the end behavior is pointed towards x equaling positive infinity. So we know the basic equation for this is y equals 1 over 4c x squared. So y is a function of x. When we go sideways to create a horizontal parabola, then our x and our y values get switched, and that's the inverse. So we would have, instead of y equals, it would be x equals 1 over 4c x, oops, y squared. So x equals 1 over 4c y squared. And so that means everything is going to be switched around, okay? So just a couple of reminders here. So a parabola is a set of all points in a plane that are the same distance or equidistance from a fixed line, which we called our directrix, and a fixed point not on the line, which we called our focus. Okay, so the fixed point is our focus. Yeah, highlight that. So the focus is our fixed point, and the fixed line is our directrix. And again, the distance has to be equidistant. So the distance from the vertex and the focus is the focal length of the parabola. So I'm gonna draw that right here. So if this is our focus, this point right here to here we called our focal cord, right? And then that total distance, remember, was what we got, that 4C. So from our focus to the one of the endpoints of our focal cord is 2C, and to the other point is 2C for a total distance of 4C. Okay. All right, so some key, key concepts that we need to know, and also just to kind of make a correlation between them of what we've already studied to what we are studying is we know that our equation for a vertical parabola is when we have y equals, and that's an important part, right? We need to remember that this is our y equals. And so we want to make sure that that's something that we remember. So for our vertical parabola, this should be our y equals. But for a horizontal parabola, that's when we have x equals. And we need to Pay attention to that because now our equations will be intermixed. Not for tonight's homework, but when we take our quizzes and our tests um, and when we get to our transformations on the next lessons, um, we will have some equations that are y and some that are x equals and we will need to pay attention to, oh, is that our vertical or is that our horizontal? And so one way to remember that is if it's y equals, we know our y equals is our vertical axis. So that reminds us, oh, if that's our vertical, it points towards the y-axis um, and runs up and down. Horizontal is x equals. Remember, our x-axis is our side to side, so that should help us remember which one is which. So our vertex here is still going to be 0, 0. So there's nothing being added to the x, so 0. Nothing being added to the y, so 0. Our focus is still, um, for our vertical parabola, at 0, c, right? So we go over 0, up and down, c. So it's our y value that changes, right? Our y value that changes. While for a horizontal parabola, instead of going up and down, we have to go left and right. So it's our x value that changes, right? So our x value should change on the horizontal. Our y value should change on the vertical. For our directrix, um, so our directrix will be y equals when we do our vertical parabolas, right, y equals. And then for our horizontal parabola, the directrix should be x equals because it will cross the x-axis at some particular value of c. And then our focal cord length doesn't change at all, okay. So just to have um, that kind of correlation, we're going to do just a little sketch. I know they're up at the top, but let's take a 
little sketch here and label things a little bit. So we have a vertical parabola with a vertex at 0, 0. And we're going to just draw a positive one. So this is if our A value is positive. That's our vertical parabola. And then somewhere up here, wherever that might be, is our focus. This is called our vertex. And then however far this is, is how far it is to our directrix. Remember that? And so our directrix, though, is a line. So I'm just going to use D for directrix. So this is a distance of C, right? So we would go up C to our focus, down C to our directrix. And then this total length from here to here, that was called our focal cord. And that total distance is 4C, which is our denominator, right? If we have a stretch of 1 over something, okay? And so then for a horizontal parabola, our vertex is still at 0, 0. But now for finding our focus and our directrix, instead of going up and down, we go left and right. So I would go right if it's a positive, so that's positive for our focus. And I would go left for my directrix, the same distance. So if I go to the right three, I would go to the left three for my vertex. And then my directrix would be along that line. And so we'll use D for directrix. And then it would open to the right. If it was positive, open to the left if negative. And then the distance to the endpoints that pass through the focus, that's called our focal cord, and it's 4C. So I would go up 2C, down 2C, and then to find my vertex to my focus, that's C, and then vertex to the directrix is also C. Okay. So then just to kind of look at this so we don't forget, so our directrix right, crosses the y-axis at some particular y-value. So y equals negative c. And then our directrix crosses the x-axis at whatever x value. So then that would be at x equals negative c. Okay? All right, so that's kind of our basic um, ideas, which is very similar to what we've already looked at. We just need to get our brains to switch backwards. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some examples here. Okay, so for this here, it asks us to graph the parabola, and we have to find and graph both um, or all of the pieces, so our vertex, our focus, our directrix, and then come up with the ordered pairs for our focal cord endpoints. So this is already into the x equals format. If not, I would have to you know, multiply or divide by something. So I look for my vertex, so I'm adding nothing to my x value, nothing to my y value. So my vertex would be 0, 0. So when I look at my stretch here, my stretch is 1 over 16. So in the past, we would just say, oh, I need to go up a 16th over 1. But we're going sideways, right? We're going uh, left and right here, so positive. So we're going to be pointed to the right. So I'm going to draw a little sketch above it to remind me to point to the right so I don't make a mistake. And then I know to find my um, value for C, I take my denominator because it's already 1 over, and I say 4C has to equal my denominator, which is 16. So this is just like we did Friday or Thursday's homework. And then divide both sides by 4. So then C is equal to 4. So because I have a sideways parabola, instead of going up 4 and down 4, I'm going to go left and right. So I'm going to go right 4. That finds my focus. And I'm going to go left 4. And that finds my directrix. So then I'm going to draw in a dotted line to indicate there's my directrix. V for vertex. So my focus is at the ordered pair, 4, 0. My directrix is a line that crosses the x-axis at negative 4. So for my focal cord endpoints, I know the total distance has to be 16. So from here across my parabola, it has to be a total distance of 16. 
So that means I need to go up eight and down eight. So this is um, not a big enough graph paper, so I'm gonna count by two. So I'm gonna call this two, four, six, eight, and I'm gonna label that so that I'm clear when I'm graphing that what I have is up eight, down eight. And the same idea here, so negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight. So I have to be a total distance of 16, so that means I need to go up eight, and I need to go down eight. So that gives me three dots for my parabola. So then I'm gonna connect to make a parabola. And then write down the ordered pairs for my focal cord endpoints. So for here I went over four, right? It should align with my focus. And then I went up eight. And then for this one I still went over four, but down eight. And there's my graph, okay? Okay, so let's look at question number two. So when I see this one, it says x is equal to negative. So because it's x equals, that means it's gonna be going left and right. Because it's negative, it's gonna be going left. So I'm gonna draw an arrow pointed to the left. To find my vertex, I look to see what's being added to the x, nothing, so that would be zero. What's being added or subtracted to the y, nothing, so zero. So now I wanna find c, so it's 4c equals my denominator, which is four, and I could write it as negative four if I want to, just to kind of remind me that I need to be going um, towards the left instead of towards the right or I can have it be positive for it. it really doesn't matter. I just need to remember though I'm going to the left. So I'm gonna take my denominator, equal it to 4c, and then solve. Okay, so I'm gonna graph my vertex, and then my value for c is one. So I have to go left one and right one. So I'm gonna go left one and right one. So everything gets flipped, right? So everything gets flipped. So because it's negative, this is now my focus. And this is my directrix here. So I'm gonna draw a line through my directrix. So the ordered pair for my focus is I went left one, up and down zero. For my directrix, I crossed the x-axis at one. And then for my focal cord endpoints, I need to figure out from my focus how far up and down I need to go. And I know the total distance has to be four, right? So the total distance from endpoint to endpoint has to be four. So if that's the case, I need to go up two and down two to get a total distance of four. And I'm getting the four from here. And so now I have my three dots to connect to make a parabola. So from my vertex to one of my focal cord endpoints, and then from my other vertex or from my vertex to my other focal cord endpoint. And I'm gonna put a V here to remind me that's my vertex. So then figure out the ordered pair for those. So I went left one, up two, right, to get to that dot. And for this one, I'm counting from the origin, left one, down two. So that's how we graph our sideways parabolas. Then the other thing we have to know, let's go right here. Okay, so the directions here say for the following, make a sketch and use the definition of a parabola to derive the equation in vertex form. So what we have to remember, so the definition of a parabola is that our distance from any random point to the focus has to equal any random point to the directrix, right? So it is equidistant, right? All points are equidistant from the voc focus as they are to the directrix. So I have to use that. So this is using distance formula. So another reminder, so distance formula. 
is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, and then the square root of all of that. So this is the definition of the problem, and then this is our distance formula. So what we have to do is we want to make a sketch, so I'm going to do that first. So I'm going to just do it off to the side here because I don't need a ton of room to do the proof. So all of our vertices um, at this point are at 0, 0, so I'm going to put a dot at 0, 0. My focus is at 3, 0. And my directrix is at x equals negative 3. So this is my vertex and focus. And so my graph will do something like that. So I'm going to just pick a random point here, P, and I call that x, y. So what I'm checking is the distance from here to here the same as from here to here. And then I know it doesn't look like it, but that's because I did a random sketch. But that's what I'm looking for. Are these distances the same? Okay. So if I look at the point here, so this is my point at D, I'm going left 3, right? And I'm going up some y value, right? Where it's at the same height as whatever this point is at. So this is at a random height, so random y value. So, but this is not at a random x, right? Because I have to go left 3 because I have to be on my directrix. So there's my directrix, there's my p, and then my focus they gave me was at 3, 0. Okay, so I have everything labeled that I need to. So now I have to do this. So I want to do point P, F, does that equal the distance from P to D? So I'm going to write down what my point P is. So my random point P, it's always going to be X, Y, never different. My focus was given as 3, 0. And I want to know is the distance between those two points equal to the distance between P and D? So again, Point P is always X, Y, never anything different, right? Some random point P. And then the directrix is at X equals negative 3, and then at whatever random Y value. Okay? So I have to now plug into this equation, right? So I have to plug into this equation. So I have to do the distance between these two points using this formula, and the distance between these two points using this formula. So I'm just going to set up my square root with my parentheses squared, set up the distance formula with my parentheses squared. So I'm not plugging in any numbers right now, right? All I'm doing is setting up. I have to do two different distance formulas, and I have my ordered pairs there. So if I look at the formula, I'm supposed to subtract the two x values in the first set, and then subtract the two y values in the second set. So subtract the two x's, subtract the two y's. Okay, so I'm just going to cover this one because I don't really care about that one right now, so I'm going to do this first one here. So my two x values are here, I'm going to subtract them, so x minus 3, and then my two y values go here, so y minus 0. Okay. And then now I'm going to do the same thing over here. So my two x values here, my two y values here. So I have x and negative 3, so that will be x minus a negative 3. And then my two y values go here, y minus y. To get rid of my square root, I have to square both sides. And so that's just going to cancel, right? So when I square root and square, I have x minus 3 squared. So I'm going to write it twice, because squared meaning I have two of them. y minus 0 is the same as y. And then it's squared, so just y squared. My root is gone now, right? This is the same as x plus 3, and it's squared. So that means I have two of those. 
And then y minus y is just 0. So that would be plus 0 squared, which is still just 0. Then distribute. So multiply this out. Still have a plus y squared. and then distribute on the second side as well. Okay, so this seems a lot more complicated than it really is, but if you just take it in small pieces, it's not that bad. Okay, so again, we're just doing the distance formula twice, paying attention to where do the x values go, where do the y values go, and then after that, it's just kind of our basic algebra. Square both sides to get rid of the square root and then just distribute things. So now I'm going to combine like terms. So negative 3 and negative 3 is negative 6. Still have a plus 9. Still have a plus y squared. Add my 3x's together. And then from here I want to simplify. So I can combine my 9, so if I subtract 9 here and subtract 9 here, those both will turn into 0. So these are going to cancel since they'll both turn into 0. If I subtract x squared and subtract x squared from both sides, that would just cancel as well, right? Because they're exactly the same, so those will turn into 0. So now these look like they should turn into 0 because I have a plus and a minus, but when I combine it, if I want to move this over here, I have to add it over, don't I? So when I add 6x over here, that's not going to cancel. So I want to add 6x to both sides. So that will cancel to 0. So I have y squared, and then 6x and 6x is 12x. So this big old jumbled mess just simplified to that kind of basic equation. And so I want it to be either x equals or y equals, right? So because this is the term that's being squared, I want to get x by itself. So to get x by itself, I would divide both sides by 12. And then my final answer will be x equals, and then dividing by 12 is the same as 1 over 12 multiplied by 12, and then y squared. And so then that's my equation using the definition. Okay, and then that'll be all for today.